Hey guys, what's going on? This is Jason with JW Classic VW, and today I'm doing the episode from uh, <laughs> from my kid's school in the parking lot. And I thought I would change the scenery up a little bit so that you guys could be, you know, a little outside environment instead of inside the garage. Yesterday I was driving around and I retarded the timing to 28 degrees at 3000 and she was running super hot. I'm gonna go ahead and check that timing with you guys so you can kind of see what I'm doing when I'm checking that timing. And also there's a few other things I wanted to talk about and uh, just specifics on the car, right? Some details that maybe you guys are interested in. Uh, I don't really go into too many details often so I thought I'd go ahead and go into them again today on the engine specifically and maybe the transmission. Uh, I know that some of you guys may have questions, so stay tuned. Some good info for you coming up right now. So, before we get started with the actual timing, let's go ahead and talk about some of the details when it comes to Goose's engine. Uh, I, I tried to save as much money as I could when it came to setting up the engine build, and some things I got used, some things I got new, but for the most part, everything was fairly decent priced, either getting it through Facebook groups and or... Uh, some of my local Volkswagen shops or the other websites that are out there. Actual engine size is a 2276. I got, uh, who did my pistons come from? Mm, AA, AA Performance. I use quite a bit of, of, quite a few things from AA Performance. I use their, their rocker arms, their one to four rocker arms. I use their pistons, 94 millimeter pistons and their, uh, their exhaust system, their Sidewinder exhaust system, which sounds pretty good. Everything when you're on a budget does take a little bit more work on your part because you're doing it. You're doing all the work. <laughs> Unless you've got a mechanic that's doing it for you. The uh, carburetors are 44 IDFs and you've seen that I've done the reverse manifolds on that. You'll get a better look at that in one second whenever I go ahead and set the timing. The, the distributor started off as, as a Dizzy or a 009 and I upgraded that to the Magnus Park 2 because I killed the Dizzy. <laughs> yeah, I killed that Dizzy. It, uh, the shaft itself, the, diz the shaft of the Dizzy distributor uh, was probably on his last leg anyway, and doing high RPMs on this engine just, uh, yeah, it killed it. So whenever I was doing the timing on that, I was trying to get that 30 degrees at 3000, there was a lot of scatter or, or uh, jumping around of the actual uh, distributor, the, the rotor. So whenever I opened up the cap, I found a bunch of copper in there. And I was like, well, that can't be good. So it was time to upgrade the distributor. The, it's got, also it's got a stage two, Kennedy stage two clutch on there and a bunch of other stuff. Down in the description below, I will list the specifics and details of this uh, 2276 build. But like I said before, you can check out the video as well. And there's a lot of good info in there. Let's go ahead and move the car and check out that timing, guys. All right. So you're going to need a couple things to do your timing on your engine. With mine, with the Magnus Spark, I'm gonna need an Allen wrench that's appropriate size to loosen up the, uh, the hold so I can move my distributor. And you're also gonna need a timing light. It lets me set the specific timing that I want and then I can watch the RPMs on the timing light. So I will link that timing light in the description below just in case you wanna take a look at it. Look at it. They also sell it at uh, your local auto parts store, so take a look there as well. All right, guys, let's go to the back of the car and take a look at this timing. Right, guys let's talk about a first a few things first before we get started on checking out this timing uh, I've already gone ahead and synced the carburetors some of the things that you want to check on the linkage before you start syncing the carburetors is is your spacing right this is kind of like what I would consider a linkage geometry you want to make sure that your geometry on both sides of your linkage is the same okay now looking at your your hex bar itself that might not be the best identifier what I went ahead and did is uh, I picked up one of these gauges from Home Depot and all it is is a digital caliber, just like this. And it allows me to check the distance between the top of the actual mount to the uh, the bracket right here where your heim joint is, is set up at, okay? So all I did was check it on both sides to confirm that this distance between the top of the mount was the same before the linkage was hooked up, 
okay? So once you have that done, you can go ahead and take your linkage off, do your sink, and then once your sink is right, you want to you go ahead and you put your linkage back on, and you want to make sure that there's like no binding here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and put some lithium on these heim joints to go ahead and add some lube to this because as it heats up, that will start to wear down and start to cause some friction. So you do want to go ahead and lube these heim joints up a little bit. So once you have your sink set, which I've already done in another video, once you have that good to go, you can go ahead and do your timing. And as you can see, I have this magnet spark too. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is hook up this timing light. This timing light right here that allows me to go ahead and set the timing that I want and then check the RPMs. So let's go ahead and take a look at that and you guys can come over here and look at what's going on. So the first thing you want to do is loosen up your distributor, but not so loose that it's like wobbling all around. Just loose enough to where it's got a little friction there for uh, setting the timing. If you go too loose, it's going to move and your timing is going gonna, gonna to be really difficult to set your timing. You, all you need is a power source, a ground source, and hook up to your number one uh, cylinder with your inductive clamp. Once you've got that good to go, you can go ahead and start your engine up and then set your timing light. This timing light allows me to adjust the actual timing that I'm looking for, and I'm going for 30 degrees. So let's bump it up to 30 degrees, we'll start the engine and see where the timing is. All right, guys, well, I came back out. It's the same night because my phone was overheating and not letting me record. Plus, it was really hard to see the timing marks, so I hope that coming out at night helped you see the timing marks a little bit better. I was definitely off. I was not even close to my, my uh, 30 degrees at 3,000, so I'm going to go ahead and run the engine now for a little while and see how she performs and if I'm getting the results that I want with that. Uh, checking the temperatures and making sure that everything's running good. Uh, Thanks again, guys, for tuning in, but that's going to do it for this episode. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and hit up the description below. If you want to check out some other great YouTubers that are out there that are doing Volkswagen-type stuff, check out the description below. Also, I told you that I would list uh, all of the uh, parts for the, the engine build down below, too. I'll go ahead and do that as well. Uh, the timing light, uh, like I told you, that's uh, something you can pick up probably at your auto parts store. It really does help to have one that you can set the timing that you're looking for and then monitor your RPMs on there as well. It's, it's made a world of difference for, for my timing. The next thing that I need to do is adjust my mixture screws to make sure that I'm at the ideal fuel to air mixture for my carburetors. And that was one of the main reasons for doing the IDF swap. So look forward to uh, doing that uh, video for you guys and uh, any other future video. If you have any uh, suggestions for videos, go ahead and hit me up below. I will be doing uh, quite a few more things pretty soon, some simple stuff. But uh, the next big video will probably be the brakes because that's going to be pretty rad. We're going to be doing uh, disc brakes all the way around on Goose because she needs it. Because now with the drums and this engine, yeah, I'm, I'm going to need brake pads soon. <laughs> <laughs> Slowing down and stopping is a little bit more scary now than it was before. The engine with the lower compression before I did the uh, the decking of this engine block, 
uh, wasn't as bad as it is now. Now I've got more power and definitely need more uh, stopping power to go with that. Once again, guys, thanks for tuning in, and I hope you've enjoyed this, uh, this video, and I will see you guys on the next one. This is Jason with JW Classic VW, and I'm out.